Okay, welcome back to our teaching uh, on the delay of the Lord. We have a lot more to say about this, but uh, uh, just bear with us. Turn with me, please, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses, uh, starting at verse 1. I encourage you, brethren, to have a fine-tipped red pen. Uh, and the only one that we found that doesn't bleed through is the Pentel BK90. It works wonderfully. Uh, sister, if you want one, I have one for you up here. But you can write in your Bible and it won't bleed through. And uh, so there's something you're going to want to write here in this context. Uh, and um, so I encourage you uh, on YouTube to follow with us here. First Thessalonians chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Paul speaking to the Thessalonian church saying, Now as to the times and the epics, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you, for you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like birth pains upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. Now what's amazing about this verse is the UN just in, uh, erected a statue, and it is right out of the book of Revelations of the beast, and it's called the, the guardian of peace and safety. So they just erected the guardian of peace and safety, and it is the beast of, of Revelation 13. They made it to look like the beast. Verse 4, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you like a thief. If, uh, um, excuse me, like a thief, for you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not uh, of night nor of darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. Now we've talked about this a lot in our church. I just want to hit it here. The words others do literally are the remaining ones. The remaining ones. The word sober is literally controlled or self-controlled. What's interesting about this is even my NAS has uh, number markings that you go to the bottom of the page and it tells you what it literally is in the context. Just like uh, in several places where it says eternal, there is a little number next to it. Look at the bottom of the page and it says literally an age. <laughs> oh, really? Well, why don't you put that in the context? Well, because they wouldn't sell as many Bibles that way. But I'm just glad that they put it at the bottom of the page. So what does it say? It's saying, look, those of you who are sons of day, sons of, uh, not sons of the, of, the light, of the night, don't be asleep as the remaining ones, but be awake and be sober. Who's the remaining ones? The ones that are asleep. The ones that are asleep. The ones that think, well, the Lord's not coming. The Lord's not coming. The Lord's not coming. He's delaying. Scripture tells us that the bridegroom will delay. It tells us he will delay. And most of the church doesn't see it, doesn't catch it. I didn't catch it until the Lord revealed it. I was so proud of Brother Marvin Byers, one of the greatest Bible teachers I've ever known, in his books, he, uh, he turned around, and when he received that revelation of the delay, he wrote a new book, uh, and it was uh, while they were all uh, uh, sleeping. Uh, um, they or they, they slumbered and slept, thank you. While they slumbered and slept. And it's a book about this delay. So I encourage you to go there and get it. It's excellent. It's excellent. But uh, uh, the delay is there. Most of the church, though, has fallen asleep, exactly what Matthew 25 tells us. Even the bride has fallen asleep. Leaning in the doorway. The difference is bride saints have done something different. They've gathered extra oil for their flask. They've gathered extra oil. So when the crier church comes along ringing the bell and saying, Behold the bridegroom, come out and meet him. They will be able to get their lamps burning bright again. But Laodicea, which will be left behind, their lamps will be begin to go out. And they won't have the light to come into the wedding feast. The delay, brethren, that's why they're asleep. And, and it's midnight when the Lord comes. It's midnight when the crier church comes and with the Spirit of Christ unlocks the door of the hearts of the church. It's midnight. It's dark out. I'm still going to be awake. Yes. 
the darker it gets, I'm staying awake. I'm going to be part of the, the crier church, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit, because <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> but he can. not And if he's given it to me to preach and to, and to, and to give me a, a, as a hope, then he can accomplish it. And I trust him. Yeah. I trust him. Amen. Then it goes on and it says an interesting thing. Skipping down to verse 9, For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. If we're awake, we can be part of the crier church. If we're the bride saints and asleep, we have extra oil, and then we'll become awake and bright. But if we're Laodicea, we won't have the extra oil, and our, our lamps will go out. Never be in that place, brethren. Never be in that place. Since we have time, I'm going to go to the Old Testament, and I invite you to go with me to the book of Zephaniah, one of the minor prophets, chapter 1, verse 12. It says this, And it will come about at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are stagnant in spirit, who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good or evil. We're at a delay. He's not doing anything. Where's the Lord? But my spouse died. But plague has covered the land. But they're taking our rights away from us. They're forcing ungodly injections which change our DNA and made in the image of God. Where are you, Lord? How come this is happening? I hear so many preachers say, but don't worry, you are not destined for wrath or the wrath. You are not destined, and they'll quote the scripture. You are not destined for wrath. I'm sorry, they'll, they'll quote 1 Thessalonians. But the problem is this, the Lord is looking at those who are alive in spirit and those who are stagnant. And the vast majority of the church is stagnant like a stagnant pool of water. The Lord wants us to be living water. Living water means that it's moving. It's like a stream. It's supposed to be pouring out of us. Well, how can it do that? Well, it can if it's pouring in. See, you're living water if the, if the, the priest is pouring more in your bucket. And, and like, like, like David said, my, my cup runneth over. Praise God! <laughs> it should be running over. <laughs> It should be running over. I, my cup's running over today. Because the Lord pours in, and when it pours in, it, come, it pours out again. And if you're receiving of the Spirit of God today from this message, it's pouring out to you. But only because it pours in. But if you're stagnant, nothing's going in. So nothing can come out. Well, why? Oh, the Lord delays. We're in the delay so I'm just going to sit back. I've had so many brethren tell me this. Brethren that I used to go to church with 30, 35 years ago. Tell me this. I'm just going to sit back and watch and wait and see the end times come about. And I cried out, don't, don't do that. You'll grow stagnant. You'll be a pool that was once rich and living. And you'll become dead and full of debris and mud. You'll grow nothing but, but mosquitoes, bloodsuckers, to go out and, and take advantage of the rest of the people. Don't do that. Don't die. Oh, some may be asleep, but they're dreaming of the Lord. Some may be asleep, but their hearts are stirred. And they're dreaming of the Lord. That's the bright saints within the church that don't know where else to go, don't know what to do, don't, know, don't have the direction yet. They haven't seen the manifestation of the sons of God yet. And they're waiting. They don't even know about such things. Some are caught in false doctrines. Some are caught believing the traditions and the fantasies of the Catholics. But they have bright hearts. And they're still awake. And they're doing what they can in the spirit. And every time they try and they do, the spirit, the dew of the night is collected. The dew of the night is collected in a bottle for them. And in the day when the crier church comes ringing the bell and saying, Behold the bridegroom, behold the bridegroom comes. In other words, the delay is over. The delay is done. Yes. They will stand up and they'll have extra oil to pour into their flask. And their flask will burn bright, or their, their lamp will burn bright 
before the world and they'll come fully alive in that day. And the Lord will take care of the details. He'll take care of the details in their lives. Don't worry about that. We're not going to need to start another Bible college. It'll be taken care of. Praise God. Just don't be stagnant in spirit. Who is it that's stagnant in spirit? Those who are claiming delay. Delay, delay, delay. The Lord is not going to do good nor evil. He's delaying. The Lord is not going to come and save. He's delaying. The Lord's not going to be here for a long time because we don't see a physical third temple being built. That's not a delay. That's a false doctrine. That's a false doctrine. It's a false hope. And so many in the church, they cry that out and they claim that and they say that. We're not in the end times yet. We're not in the, vast, uh, the end of the end times because the third temple is not being built yet. It's not being built yet. And so they say, we can go on living life. We can go on. How many of you have heard the prayers of the church that comes out and, and they pray, Lord, restore us to our greatness? That was one of the prayers I just used in a, in a teaching uh, with the Hawaiian church. Restore us to our greatness. We bind the enemy, it said. Not Jesus bind the enemy. They bind the enemy. We bind the enemy that's bringing about the last days and bringing about, like they could do that. Bringing about the last days and bringing about the, the beast uh, system and bringing about, the, we bind that and we ask, oh God, oh no, they said they demanded. Uh, the spirits who are stopping the prosperity of America to be broken and cast off. I read that and I started laughing. I <laughs> said, are you serious? Yes. They're very serious. A chain letter going all around and people are naming it and claiming it. Jesus said concerning the last days in Matthew 24, he said, all these things have to happen and all this destruction is going to come and all these birth pains are going to happen. It's going to be terrible for a while, but these things must be before the end. Because at the end, Jesus, you can have Jesus. You have the millennial reign of Christ. You have Jesus, the bride has Jesus in wholeness and is, is in the rapture, but also ministering back again, back and forth, Jacob's dream. We'll go into that more next time. I want Jesus. That means the brethren, we have to go through the birth pains. We have to go through the end times. We have to go through the rise of the beast. We have to go through all of this, the new world order. We have to go through the great harvest of souls. We have to go through the, the death, the, the first horse, the second horse, the third horse. We have to see those start before the rapture. It's already started. The white horse is already riding. It's already happened. The white horse is the first It's Daniel shows us that. It's very clearly, very clearly there. It's amazing times that we're in. It's amazing times that we're in. I just want to end this video with saying this, brethren. Never, never, never stand in the delay of the Lord. Never stand and say, he's not coming. Treat each day as your last. I had a preacher say that to me years and years and years ago, and it's so true. Treat each day as, it's, as though it's your last on this earth. It might be. You don't know how long uh, your days are and your, your hours. Uh, so treat each day as though it's your last Treat each day as though the Lord's coming tomorrow, even though you know certain, certain events are going to happen. But we don't have the details, so we don't know how it's going to happen. But never say in your heart, the delay of the Lord. The delay of the Lord. The delay of the Lord are these. So it will not happen but for a long, long, long time. Listen, uh, getting back uh, to our context in Jeremiah. Very, very, very interesting. Jeremiah, uh, and, uh, and then also uh, Ezekiel, when Ezekiel was crying out against the de uh, those who were claiming the delay of the Lord, guess how long the Lord delayed before Israel was destroyed? 30 years after Ezekiel said that. 30 years. Then everything Jeremiah and Ezekiel prophesied would come upon Israel came. And it came in two, actually three horrible carryings away and murdering of, of the vast majority of all of Israel until at the end Solomon's temple lay in ruins. All the gold was gone. The holy vessels were taken to Babylon. The whole, all the prophecies came true just 30 years after they said this. Don't claim the delay. Don't claim the delay. Well, we have, people have been claiming the delay since uh, especially the latter rain outpouring uh, began and uh, uh, brethren, 
we're at the end of that time. The delay is almost done. Revelations tells us very, very clearly the delay is over. It's over right after the rapture. There's delay no more. It's done. And we have a very little time before uh, the rapture. So praise God. Your hope is drawing near. Draw near to the Lord. He'll draw near to you. Lord bless you. Thank you.